So, you know, I've put on things where I'm like, ah, this is not, not just not me. First Say, of all, I oh, look sorry, like Caillou man. with the hat. I like exploring. I'm Caillou. The whole hype beast scene has exploded over the past seven years, especially in the Asian community, to the point where we have to break it down. What's going on everybody? Thank you so much for clicking on that video. You're gonna find it hilarious, so keep watching, but I wanna tell you about our sponsor today, the Check Check app. You can follow them on Instagram right down below, and I'm also gonna tell you how you can win a free pair of Air Jordan 1 Royal Toes if you just keep watching. All right, so the Check Check app is a new sneaker authenticating app that actually solves your problem of not knowing whether a shoe is legit or a knockoff, because as you guys know, man, knockoffs are getting so good nowadays that unless you're an expert, it's gonna be really, really hard to tell and let me tell you this the coolest thing about it is that they give you the results within 30 minutes so the first step is that you're gonna take pictures of your sneakers and then you're gonna send it into them and then it's gonna go through an advanced AI scan which is gonna cross reference it with the data points that's in their database and then it's gonna go through a co-authentication process which means two human experts are actually gonna take a look at the photos and then Within 30 minutes, they're gonna make a read and let you know. And another cool thing about this app is that it's 24 seven. So literally you can be at like 4 a.m. and then they're still gonna give you your results. So definitely check it out guys. It's only $1 to get your shoes checked. I think it's totally worth the peace of mind, especially if you have any doubt in your mind at all. So download the app today and cop confidently. And if you keep watching this video, I'm gonna tell you how you can win the Jordan 1 Royal Toes for free. Thank you and enjoy the rest of this video. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very, very special video. Fun Bros here. We Woo! got Richie Lee in the building. What up? And thank you for letting us use your set. For sure. We have a kind of throwback list video where we've kind of mapped out the different types of Asian hype beasts. We have four different types of hype beasts that we're going to be going over today. This is a really important list because I think that there's a lot of different, you know, there's a lot of different styles out right now. Mm -hmm. But you just have to learn how to categorize so you can mix and match the way you want. I would say now, more so than even than ever, there's different categories of fashion and the way people are dressing and the way they're coming across. So um, I'm excited to go over this. There's probably like four main types of Asian hype beasts that you see in America. Number one is Hooper Hype. Their style is rooted in basketball and sports. They wear a lot of Nike and Adidas, especially the more expensive pieces. Number two, Music Hype. Their style is more artistic and rooted in music, punk, rock, and skate. This is probably the biggest style that's trending right now in 2020. Number three, Corporate Hype. This guy likes hype gear, but is still dressing Fortune 500 safe. It's almost like a mixture between GQ menswear with a little bit of hype. Number four, international hype. It's very flashy and very expensive with a lot of designer brands that you may or may not be familiar with. Now, those are the four main styles, but there's a lot of smaller ones like retired hype beast or tech wear guy. You can have a mixture of different styles, but it's just fun to think about. And by the way, we are no means saying that we are fashion experts. In fact, we just made this up. All right, so we got four different types of Asian hype beasts. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is the Hooper guy. Ooh. Now, let me just rattle off some characteristics of this guy that we've kind of given him. Um, favorite sport is almost always basketball. Maybe their favorite music is rap. That's probably true. They take on more of that traditional kind of Nike and Jordan lane. Mm. You know, they might wear basketball shorts in with the hype outfit. They do like Nike and Bape. They have some athleisure wear. Are they part of a hoop league? Yes. These guys, they do want to let the world know that they do hoop. And the reason the 11 is the ultimate hooper shoe, even though crazy enough, it's out right now in 2020, right? It's out. <laughs> Not the hot issue. Breaks my heart. <laughs> Breaks my heart. <laughs> I'm waiting. I've been saying this on my channel. I've been waiting for Virgil to make, make these hot again. Make the 11 hot again. And I feel like there's different levels of the hooper guy where on one level, you're actually wearing legit performance basketball shoes. And this is where this comes into play because this is in between. This is a solid performer, but it's not a Kobe right now. I would say a good uh, indication between levels between this one is if they play or if they're just a huge fan of the NBA, because there's a difference. To me, you know who, who, who they might dress like on the very top end? Nate Robinson. Mm, I feel Nate like Robinson Nate Rob, like if you show Nate Rob has the true Hooper style, in my opinion. Bobito would That's argue that at its very core, when, uh, bat, when sneaker collecting started in New York City, it was actually a hybrid between sport and music always. Well, the shoes. essence of sneakers is culture, being about it. And so when I was having conversations with him, he was saying there is no separation between how you dress and then what you're doing. So if you hoop, you better look like a hooper. Like you better have, that's how it originates. All right, you guys, a few sneakers that I have that are classics amongst the Asian hooper hype beast. Okay. The Air Jordan 3, 
Yep. The yeah. Air Jordan 4. That's a good one. Okay. The Air Force 1. Air Max 90. They love Kobe's. Kobe's too. Yeah, Kobe's. Kobe's. You know how you were saying, though, it's more like GR Jordans? I've seen them with the rare Kobe's, though. That's different yeah. than, like, they'll wear Grinch Kobe 6s. Ooh. Uh, yo, yeah, shout true. out to Nelson. That's ne his number one shoe of the all Kobe time. Six. The hot take from the Asian Hooper hype beast, the Kobe line is an acceptable shoe to wear for lifestyle. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that is, is an, an Asian, Asian Hooper, Hooper opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Big no-nos for this group. Shoes that are dirty or shoes that do not fit with a hip-hop sporty image. I have this as their grails. Red Octobers. Nah, I'll say Kobe six Grinches. Co yeah, you're right. Of NBA players who kind of stay in lane number one, Devin Booker. Oh, okay. He, he more so stays away from the more hipster rocker subculture influence. Yeah, yeah. He's more of a pure sporty guy. Number two is the music guy. Mm. Okay, now we let's mm. let's conjure up some images here. You know, they're really into subculture. They might listen to <laughs> Tyler the Creator, Juice World, 88 Rising, a little bit more hipster. People in the NBA who dress like this might be a little bit more like shy. Kelly Oubre. They wear logos, they wear a lot more vintage. They'll they'll dabble into the rock band tees you know, some of the more like distressed. Westbrook was one of the guys to first like push this in the league, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think for a so. while the league was so stuck in lane number one. So let's talk about a lot of the popular shoes that they would wear, David. The Air Jordan 1. Okay. For sure. Ni Nike Dunk SB. CDG Chuck Taylor. The Yeezy, Adidas Yeezy. Yeah. Their grails are probably Dior Jordan 1s, any Travis Scott collabo, mm -hmm. Rare SBs. Hype stuff. Yeah. yeah well, these are sure. more of the guys who wear like the oversized tees. Yeah. Um, it, it's big. I mean, this is like the main uh, type of outfit you right, you see right now on like League Fits. Tyler Hero's really like trying to get into this lane. I think this is the most trendiest yeah. look right now. Well, Would it's you very, very influenced by Fear of God. Fear of God, like rocker. It's kind of like the thing right now because it, it's, it's the best of both worlds. You still get like sneakers like a Jordan 1 that still represent basketball. Mm -hmm but you have a hype element with the collabs. Would you say the first guy to really bring this to the NBA maybe was like Nick Young? Yeah. I mean, Nick Nick Young always quotes himself saying he was the starter of the whole league fits, like paying attention to outfits and whatnot. Trying so, to look like a rapper on the way to the basketball Yeah, he game. did a good job. He did a good job at that. Uh, Man, who else? Who else? Chai, Chai took it to another level too. You know what's funny is like, I feel like Lonzo Ball is so a number one but he's been trying to dabble in the two. Oh, but you can tell that it's yeah. a number one trying yeah, to shift to a number two. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny. Music is hugely influenced clothing right now, like m even more than what, sports. Would I you think. say this is the trendiest style on Instagram? It's the trendiest right now. It's, right. it's what's getting reposted. It's, it's, it's huge. It's just more harder to pull off, right? So that's right. why it's more like something's harder. People want to gravitate pulling it off more, right? Right, right. you get more Easy skill stuff. points. Yeah, you get more right. skill points. You know, the Hooper... That's just, that's easy, you know, right. just throwing certain pieces, you're there. But this one, like, you got to put together outfits and stuff. So I think that's what, it's like, a, it's a challenge almost to a lot of people. Do you think this style is timeless? Like, once it's here to stay, kind of the vintage, oversized tee, like, it's, it's just... Nothing's timeless. Oh. <laughs> I would oh, say wow. so. Like, everything's okay. coming back. Levin's coming back soon. It's all soon. a cycle. Levin's it's all about a to cycle. be fire again. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. I can't wear this style. I, I I have a Kyle Lowry <laughs> I have a Kyle Lowry PJ Tucker body. You want a hanging earring or not? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do the hanging <laughs> earring. The third type of Asian hype beast here is the corporate hype slash menswear hype beast. Mm. So these are Asian guys who um, maybe they That's work a, a nine to five or a corporate job, That's but a good one. They seem like they could. They keep their outfits usually clean. Nothing super distressed, oversized, and edgy. Here are some of the things they like. Ultra Boost and NMDs. Yeah. I think these guys own a pair of Jordan 1s, sure. but they don't have like maybe the hypest ones. Okay. Not, they don't have like the fag the fragments yeah. or the off whites. I can see yeah. that. I can but see they have that. maybe one pair of like Royals or Shadows. Well, 97s are a good one. 97s, 90s. They tie in their Air Forces. Yeah. yeah. If they if they Ooh, wear them, they're tying a, them tight. They're tying one. them tight. Uh, they like their jeans a little bit more like on the safer end. The you know the mid wash ones. Mm -hmm. I, I would say blazers are a good mm -hmm. one. Their grail would be the off white blazers, not the Sean Weatherspoon. 
Yeah. Sean Buck's okay. being a little okay. loud. These could still be worn with like a dress shirt. The Blazers. They're That's into true. the hype stuff, but they don't think that maybe they should look like rappers themselves. Like they For don't sure. try to look like Travis Scott. They don't want to commit too hard into yeah. that hype lane. Yeah. Right. You don't want to be like in the wild and see your boss and their boss is like, what the f are you wearing? <laughs> All right, the number four type of Woo! Asian hype beast is international hype. Oh, uh, that's a good one. All right, let's just pop up some pictures. They real are quick hype. Here. I would say a lot of their outfits are loud. Um, they have a lot of brands, but I, you can really put together some really dope outfits that I've seen, even though they look they look so expensive. Uh, how about how about not just the off white ten collection? We're talking about just off white period as yeah. a brand. Yeah, they 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 are loyal to the off white. So that's the one thing about these guys is there's a lot of high beasts that only fall into the Nike off white, but they will do the off white. That's that's as pretty, a brand. Like, as a I brand. feel like and, they and, follow and they, Virgil the most. And they, maybe. and they probably were on Pyrex before that. Pyrex, uh, Givenchy. Uh, you love MCN. And MCN course. backpacks are big. You know what is a big thing that differentiates them from the music lane? I do not think that this group cares that much about resale value. They care about the retail value. Yeah. <laughs> They care about retail, not like, the resale. And I feel like a few years ago, a lot of them used to get knocked for just having logo mania, but a lot of them actually have like really cool, well put together outfits now. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Like it's still kind of like a lot for a lot of people. Like, oh, I. At what point it was getting crazy, I think, yeah. and people were just like labeling it too much. But the one thing I noticed is they'll still eat at the cheap Chinese spot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they're that cool with that. The, the, the spot that's the good food. Hey, you know, there's a part of me that really likes it. Yeah, me because I like just like the colors, mm -hmm. but uh, literally the outfits are like way more expensive. Moving on, here's are some smaller niches, and maybe we'll give them their own lane, or we have to categorize them underneath something else. The retired hype beast designer, the Ronnie Feig, Kith, Jeff Staple. Right. Perhaps a younger version would be it's Ame. kind of the corporate corporate it falls into that a little bit yeah i feel like these are uh, a lot of the hype beasts who have been in the game for a while that have families now <laughs> you know what i see i see lebron actually interface with a lot of designers from this generation whether it's john elliott or ronnie five that is true lebron has a yeah. little he uh, appreciates art yeah like if yeah. you look at his collaborations he did with kith it's like floral prints and like you know a, a pretty artistic drag or a lion. All right, how about this? How about this? I got Japanese fashion guy and tech wear guy, which are kind of like semi-related with each other. Okay. So Japanese fashion guy are is uh, people who wear like literally cuts that are inspired or directly from Japanese designers. So we're talking trousers, about trousers, baggy yeah. trousers, the samurai pants, uh, really high cut sneakers like the Rick Owen dunks. Yeah. I think the reason that we put Japanese fashion guy and tech wear guy, which is like your, you know, super future year 3000 yeah. look, they're, mm -hmm. they're sort of like slightly separated, but there's a lot of crossover. Acronym could be worn by both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Stone Island Project Shadow. Yeah. Could go either way. Yeah. Tech wear is a, a style that you see that's a little bit more common than the Japanese uh, I guess fashion style in America, and it's it's taken a little bit more of a foothold. It is related. Got this it, is this it. is the lane that really acronym falls into. Nike Lab. Yeah, Nike got Lab. It, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. They'll still. I feel like these guys will still like Ultra Boost though. Yeah. 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 Boost shoes. Yeah. Uh, with the pants, with the cuffed pants at the bottom pulled yeah, yeah. up a little bit. The fashion baller guy. We had an argument about it. We had to just throw it out. That's not hype. Huh? The, the, the fashionable the, the, GQ the, the, Esquire the G, the guy. The GQ guy with the St. Laurent shoes with like a APC bomber. He's not on the hype beast list. No, yeah. No, no, no. Because I feel to, like, just I feel like Complex hype was hype. hype. You know, GQ hype. is getting a little hype, but then Esquire is still down here Esquire. where they're like only suits only. Speaking for even me and David, we've been tweening between styles a lot. Mostly. Tweening is cool though. Tweening is cool. But, but tweening I, is cool. You know what I feel like? Here's the issue. It's not that there's no problem. I mean, you can be whoever you want, but I felt like for me, for example, a lot of my outfits were mixed up you're skipping like lanes to another like you far far land to yeah. like oh sh a basketball guy wouldn't wear that also it also comes down to like what you would feel comfortable in too that's your intuition and what you're when you put on something how do you feel for the guys that are typically like me which are almost like 80 percent hooper pick more classier if you gotta stick with nike and you're like a nike boy you gotta elevate it because nike has so many different Levels, levels now to their yeah. clothes try to stick with like the upper 30 percent 
for sure, for house. sure. Uh, because I'm, if you're like wearing like big five Nike clothes, it still mm. puts you in that lane. But it's just not going to look grown. No, no, yeah. not all Nike pieces, just because they got a swoosh on it, does not <laughs> make it the same thing. I guess for me, Rich, I'm trying to refine my style, perhaps find a... What, what's going to work for me? I like the, uh, for you, maybe that Kith lane, because, you know, Kith is still sports uh, influence. Mm -hmm. It's New York. No, I, I definitely have. You know why I know that that works? Because I, I bought some uh, Bodega New Balances, mm -hmm. 997s, and I was just getting compliments on compliments there from all types of people who would never compliment Jordans real quick just to wrap up guys I want to talk about a few things that kind of like flow between lanes I feel like that's why a lot of people like essentials at PacSun you get you get the music lane and, and you get yeah, what you maybe get, the corporate lane yeah you get a menswear you know more like proper look that's why I think yeah. and that's what cut and sew is fear of God you're still getting like a proper look at the end of the day you wear what you want to wear yeah. wear what makes you feel confident but there are certain styles and pieces that go with different looks. Yeah, and it's always important to reflect on what type of uh, image you're trying to get across yeah. and stuff. So that's why these videos are always helpful. For me, David, I've definitely been deeply rooted in the Hooper hype style. In high school playing on the basketball team, everyone was wearing tall tees and I was always into Japanese fashion somewhat and general menswear as well. So I've got to say that those two make up at least 20 to 30% of my style identity. As I've gotten older, I've definitely started to try out other genres such as the retired hype beast, Ronnie Fye designer lane. I think that the Hooper style will make up a smaller and smaller percentage of my wardrobe, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's always one of the top two genres. For me, Andrew, my current style is a little bit of a mashup of equal part Hooper, music, and corporate hype. You know, that makes for a unique outfit, but it doesn't really make sense. I always get compliments when I wear something that actually flows together and fits my image. And as I get older, to be honest, I appreciate that a lot more. So it's important to ask yourself what fashion means to you. Is it to wear whatever you feel like wearing, which is totally fine, or do you want it to make sense to people? All right, guys, so like I said in the beginning, this is how you're gonna win the Jordan 1 Royal Toes. What you're gonna do is you're gonna download the Check Check app, and then you're gonna use this referral code right here this one that I'm flashing up. And then basically you're also gonna get some free credits to get your shoes checked. So if you just download the app, use the referral code, you might win a pair of Jordan 1s, and then you're also gonna get free credits to get your shoes checked. It's a good deal, guys. Also follow them on Instagram for like education about uh, real versus fake sneakers. And you know, they'll give you updates on how to avoid replicas. Follow them on IG, download the app. It's simple, it's easy. What do you gotta lose? All right, the Check Check app, check it out. All right, everybody, that was the four different types of Asian hype beasts. Um, thank you so much for watching that, man. Shout out to Richie for, for bringing his expertise in here and letting us use your set. For sure. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure to smash that like button, hit the notifications, click subscribe, and in the comments down below, let us know which type of hype beast you might fit into or what mixture you might be because you can be a mixture of all of them because some people have their music outfit and some people have their corporate outfit and please let us know in the comment section below if there are any other types that we missed out on i know that there's like so many different ways of dressing right. i was just thinking of the main archetypes in my mm -hmm. mind oh. all right everybody thank you so much for watching that's richie david and andrew from the fun bros and until next time we out peace, peace. Ah! Oh! Sorry. Andrew ain't been the same since you told him he couldn't wear no more Hooper gear, bro. Oh. He ain't been the same for 24 hours.